is up guys EJ here back with another video and uh, today it's gonna be my DVD update for April 2nd 2013 so I've got uh, nine movies to show you um, all from the uh, 1940s uh, trying to co complete my 40s collection so uh, let's get started up first we have Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein uh, one of the funniest movies of all time great uh, horror comedy course starring uh, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. I'm not that familiar with uh, Abbott and Costello's films uh, but they had a great canon uh, of movies uh, in the 40s and this is their most well-known one. Um, they play two baggage handlers who received the remains of uh, classic movie monsters like Dracula and Frankenstein uh, on their way to a, a horror museum and uh, all hell breaks loose. There's appearance by uh, the Wolfman as well. Uh, it's great 100th anniversary uh, Universal uh, series edition with the uh, nice slipcase. So that's uh, Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. Okay, up next uh, we have Ali Baba and the Forty Thieves from 1944, uh, directed by Arthur Lubin, starring uh, John Hall and uh, Maria Montez. Um, I was familiar with uh, the story Ali Baba and the Forty Thieves when I was growing up. Uh, but I don't think I've seen uh, this version of it um, film uh, about a orphaned uh, young boy who grows up with thieves and uh, tries to avenge the death of his father and uh, reclaim the royal throne. Uh, it's in beautiful uh, Technicolor on the back, you can tell. Uh, some good looking images, so I'm really looking forward to watching this. Uh, I've never seen it, but I am familiar with the story. Okay, up next we have uh, And Then There Were None. Uh, from 1945, directed by Renee Clare. Um, film based on a uh, Agatha Christie uh, uh, story, uh, Ten Little Indians, uh, starring uh, Barry Fitzgerald and Walter Houston. A uh, film about ten strangers who are, who are invited to a island, uh, a beautiful estate on an island, and uh, they're all accused of being uh, murderers. And then uh, one by one, uh, they start to die. So it's a great. Uh, one of those great Agatha Christie murder uh, murder mysteries. Um, yeah, great film. If you haven't seen it, highly recommend it. And then there were none. Okay, up next, uh, a Criterion Collection. And that's um, a Brief Encounter from uh, 1945, uh, directed by David Lean, spine number 76. A uh, film starring uh, Trevor Howard and um, Celia Johnson. A uh, film about a illicit love affair uh, between uh, two uh, two would-be strangers in 1945 Britain. Um, one's a, a doctor and the other a, a suburban house, housewife. And it's sort of set against the backdrop of uh, post-war uh, England at that time. Uh, one of uh, David Lean's uh, great films uh, from the 40s. Of course, he made uh, other great ones like uh, Great Expectations, uh, which I also have on the uh, Criterion Collection. Uh, so that's a Brief Encounter. Okay, up next, um, had to pick this up, and that's uh, Lifeboat from uh, 1944, directed by Alfred Hitchcock, of course. Uh, one of his great films that was nominated for several Academy Awards, um, including Best Picture. Of course, he never won. Uh, Best Director, and I don't think any of his films ever won Best Picture. Um, but this film, of course, um, set during World War II. Um, a uh, boat gets uh, torpedoed in the Atlantic by a uh, German U-boat, and uh, eight uh, survivors are left stranded on a lifeboat. And then they pick up a ninth, and uh, he happens to be the captain of the U-boat uh, that sunk them. A uh, great film set in one location on a boat. A lifeboat and uh, one of Hitchcock's uh, greatest films. Okay, up next, um, I picked up uh, The Magnificent Ambersons um, from 1942, uh, directed by Orson Welles. Now, uh, a lot of people, of course, are familiar with uh, Citizen Kane, uh, Orson Welles' masterpiece from 1941. Many consider it the greatest film ever made, uh, but not many people know or talk about. Uh, the film we made after it, and that's uh, this one, uh, The Magnificent Ambersons. Uh, for the longest time, this wasn't even available uh, on DVD in the U.S. I've been looking for it for ages, and I sort of given up uh, looking for it. Uh, but then, I, like a couple years ago, this DVD got released, and 
uh, finally had a chance to pick it up. Uh, starring uh, Joseph Cotton and who else? Uh, Ann Baxter. Uh, it's a film about a, uh, a Midwestern uh, family, um, very uh, prestigious uh, family who's, uh, whose fortunes um, turn to uh, sort of go awry uh, due to industrialization and uh, pride. A uh, great film directed by Orson Welles, sort of in the same style as Citizen Kane. And uh, not many people have probably had a chance to see it or even uh, talk about it. So that's the Magnificent Ambersons. Okay, up next uh, we have National Velvet from 1944, uh, starring Elizabeth Taylor and uh, Mickey uh, Rooney. Um, sort of the film that made uh, Liz Taylor into a bona fide star. Uh, she plays a young girl who pretends to be a boy who wins a, uh, a horse at a raffle and with the help of a, uh, a former jockey played by Mickey Rooney uh, she wants to train it for the uh, Grand National uh, Steeplechase. Um, I believe it was on the list of uh, greatest sports films ever made uh, that AFI did a few years back when they did all their top 10 genre lists and uh, National Velvet was on it. Uh, great film. Love uh, Liz Taylor, of course. Um, watched Cleopatra a couple days ago, like many of you may know, uh, from my movie marathon, which I have basically recovered from. Uh, but National Velvet, had to pick it up. Okay, and up next, uh, we have They Were Expendable from uh, 1945, uh, part of the uh, John Wayne collection. Uh, film directed by uh, John Ford, of course mainly uh, the two of them known for their westerns uh, but this film set during World War II about the uh, sort of last defense of the Philippines before it fell at the beginning of the uh, Pacific War. Um, Robert Montgomery and uh, John Wayne play two uh, PT uh, skippers, PT boat skippers. Um, Donna Reed is in this as well. I just watched uh, From Here to Eternity as well during my marathon. Uh, she's stunning in that film. And she's great in this one too. So great World War II film with uh, John Wayne and uh, Robert Montgomery. Okay, last but not least, another World War II film. And that's uh, 30 Seconds Over Tokyo uh, from 1944. Uh, directed by Mervyn Leroy. Uh, starring Spencer Tracy, uh, Van Johnson, uh, Robert Walker, uh, Robert Mitchum. A uh, great film about the events following Pearl Harbor and the... Uh, the uh, Doolittle raids uh, on Tokyo, the attempt to uh, uh, have bombers take off from uh, carriers and uh, drop bombs on Japan. Uh, basically the last 20 minutes of uh, Pearl Harbor, if you're familiar with that film, the ending of Pearl Harbor is about the same story, about how in response to uh, uh, the Pearl Harbor attack, uh, America wanted to uh, bomb Tokyo as quickly as possible and they devised a plan to, um, I believe it's the B-25, yeah, to launch B-25 bombers off aircraft carriers um, as quickly as possible so, um, so they could do that and sort of get into the war, uh, the early stages of World War II for the American side anyway. Uh, Spencer Tracy plays uh, Doolittle. I believe Alec Baldwin played, uh, played that character in Pearl Harbor. So another great uh, World War II film from the 40s. So uh, those are my nine pickups. Um, many of these films, I'm sure a lot of, a lot of you guys haven't seen, but uh, highly worth checking out if you get a chance to, especially uh, The Magnificent Ambersons. Um, I don't know how long it was unavailable for, but it seemed like forever. So uh, that is my update. Thank you for watching as always, and until next time, I'll see ya. Bond. James Bond.